Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our lunch intermission. We want to welcome all of you back to the Educational Ascension Summit. Next up, we've got Kayvon Fair going over human design and how it is a tool that can help you better understand yourself. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay. Well, first of all, um, before I really get into it, once again, I just want to thank you, Cheryl, and the entire team for just bringing such a beautiful energy to the light. So many people in our country need havens like this. Like, they don't know yet, but especially the people of Louisiana, because I stayed here for a little while, so I got a chance to kind of soak up the energy. And the people here really need this, but not just here, but just the entire planet. So I, I want to let you know how important this is, regardless of who actually shows up. We're radiating, we're radiating energy that can't even be named right now. And this energy, it goes through the pores, the clothes, the doors, the stone, right? This is divinity. And I just want to thank you for building such a great just space for us to come in and to radiate this light to the rest of the planet. So thank you. Thank you. So before we, before we go um, even, you know, we're going we're gonna to do it step by step, right? So the next step before we step onto the step is I actually, well, a little bit about me, I guess. My name is Kay Vaughn. I'm from Miami, Florida. And I've been, I've been teaching the human design since tw around late 2010. So it's about 12 years now I've kind of been in the game. And I've been slowly but surely, one person at a time, just ushering people through the portal. So I got a download a long time ago that I was a gatekeeper. And I didn't know what a gatekeeper was, but I kept hearing this thing about being a gatekeeper. And being a gatekeeper, it's, it's, it sounded grandiose and amazing at the time. But I realized that when you're a gatekeeper, you have to kind of be at the gate. <laughs> so my job is watching everybody just go stroll on by, right? But my job is ushering you through the portal into the fifth dimension and beyond. So everybody that I've been ushering through these gates for the past 12 years, I've just been watching people's lives just expand and just grow beyond belief. So I just want to let you guys know that each and every one of you here, you guys are going to take a seed with you today. And this seed is going to spread. And, it's, and no matter what you do, no matter what you say, it's going to blossom and bloom from where you're at. And this is the energy that we're bringing now. So this pyramid that we're in is radiating, right? The pyramid radiates energy from the bottom, and then it transmutes it in the middle, and then it literally goes from negative, transmutes it in the middle, and then positive radiation outside. So the fact that we're all stepping into these pyramids, we're transmuting ourselves and the message. So the message is coming out pure no matter what we say. So today is just a day that I've been really told to really give the message that each and every one of us beacons, we're beacons. And I tell a lot of my students about becoming a beacon and the responsibility of that. So you guys are the beacons. And you're going to carry this light everywhere, even on the inner realms, right? Because the inner realms is where it all starts. So I like to start everything that I do from the heart space. Because I found out a long time ago that that's where the higher self is. That's where the goal is. That's where the, that's where the, the unlimited jewels. So 
I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do Qigong, right? Cause I actually study Qigong, but I've learned a certain little trick and a little secret to just really tap into the heart energy real quick. And I want to drop that jewel on everybody before I tap into the human design stuff because I'm really about practically, like the practical use of the magic, right? So every time I learn something, I'm going to use it, right? And I'm going to feel it and feel how it is. So each organ in our body, there's a specific sound, a specific vibration. That's why I love Mark, man, Mark's energy. It was the perfect setup for us to understand that one, your energy first. And when you're energy first, right, the first medicine that you need to take is energy. So we can expand on being energy now, and we have certain medicines now that we can literally tap into the energy with fast. So one of the medicines that I love is vibration and sound. So I learned from a Qigong master in New Mexico about the sound for the heart. So each organ has three layers. You have the physical layer, emotional layer, and spiritual layer. So there's three different sounds to the heart frequency. So I'm gonna teach you all the sound of the heart and you can utilize this at any time. And it, what it does is it removes all of the stagnant, stale energy that's kind of wrapped around our hearts. That's kind of blocking us from tapping into just a deeper connection to our divinity. So the first sound is gonna be the word sheen. S-H-E-E-N. So they don't have, in sound healing Qigong, there's not a lot of physical movements. So it's a real simple movement for the heart space. And you can do this before you tap into any of your sessions and things like that so that you can kind of just set the space and the energy for the heart frequency. So sheen is said, you, you say it and you want to say it a little strongly. You want to, because it's, it's fire. So I'm going to say it first and then you all can kind of chime in and we'll do it just three times so that you can kind of feel this energy. Now, I've done this energy while I was in a car, and it was traffic in front of me. And when I started opening up that heart space, people started getting out of the way. Because most people are not driving in their heart. They're not really existing within their heart. So whatever you do, the reality does. We call that the reality mirror. So one of the deepest things to understand when you start tapping into this stuff human design, IFS, energy healing, all of this stuff, you're going to eventually walk, a, you're going to eventually hit a door and it's going to be a mirror there. And that mirror is going to be everything that you see around you. And I call this the reality mirror. Once you understand you're living in the mirror, the game changes completely, but you have to start taking responsibility. So now I don't expect people to get out of my way or traffic to clear up magically. No, I have to take responsibility and clear up my space. Because if it's traffic outside, it's traffic inside. So the way that we, up, we clear up the traffic inside is through sheen. So it's literally sheen. That's it for the physical. So Y'all repeat after me so that we can radiate this to the internet land and to the world and everybody else who may not be listening, but they will feel it. Deep breath in. She. Deep breath in. She One more time. She OK. 
okay, so this is how we physically open up the heart space. We physically release sorrow, sadness, and open up to joy. So the heart space is how we open up to joy. So whenever you want to physically tap into the joy, first break up the crust by sheening. That, that's the physical. So the emotional. She on S H E O N G. So she on the she on is it's kind of like the flower essence. So when you start doing this for a while, it'll literally start bringing out the rose deodorant. So you have certain people who will reach a certain level of mastery. And when you go around them, they just smell like roses. They smell good and they don't wear deodorant or anything, it's because the heart space is fully blossomed. So we have to clear the emotional space to get there. So the emotional sound, it goes like this, and it's, and it's almost like a sound, it's almost like you're singing, singing it a little bit. So it's, she So this is the emotional to clear up the emotional, stuck, grumpy energy that we may have in our heart. All right, so deep breath in. She sound good okay Woo. okay let's go let's get it all right so the next level <laughs> the next level is the next level oh excuse me the next level is the spiritual dimensions within the heart space so a lot of us we will have stuck stagnant energy in our spiritual heart body so the way that we clear this one up is through the words shing. So it's S-H-I-N-G. But as you, so as you go up with the shing. So you, the ing, the G is very soft. So what we're doing is we're pulling the energy from the heart and we're moving it up into the head space so that we can create the connection with the heart and the mind. So just an example is she So you can feel the energy rising up and out. All right. So Deep breath in. Shing. So it's shing, silent G. Deep breath. Shing. Deep breath in. She. All right. All right. So the ground the energy back down. We just want to go. We're we just going to do a quick little up and down. Just breathe. Bring the energy up. Energy down, ground it back down to the ground, full body. Breathe up. Ground the energy back down. One more time. Breathe it up. Ground the energy back on down. All right. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Now we can understand how we feel. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you all once again. Third portal, I just want to tell you all that I love you. I forgive you. I honor you. I allow you. Thank you. So, human design and multidimensionality. The human design, first of all, was the human design, first of all, was it was one of the most profound teachings that I have ever come across. And it wasn't simply because of the knowledge of the human design. It was just, it, it was the way it felt. It was the way that it felt when I just heard about it, when I heard the words human design. And I want people to just understand that it's the human design and you're all humans. The human design, it literally is, it literally is the knowledge of the form, the form that we inhabit. Because we're human beings on this planet and we have gone through a couple of glow, uh, uh, I would say planetary resets, and these are the biblical stories we hear about with the flood and fires and all type of stuff. And the reason, one of the main reasons why is because as a humanity, we kind of have been the equivalent of a chicken running around with our heads cut off. So the best thing that we know is, okay, we see someone being successful, we see them happy, we say, okay, how can I be like that? How can I, like what can I do to get to that level? So we just monkey see, monkey do for the most part. And we say, okay, this person learned about chakras, this person did yoga, so let me go over here and do some yoga. Let me go and tap into the Akashic and do all of this stuff because they are successful. They have a lot of attention and, and money or whatever it is. So a lot of us, we were brought up to kind of follow these celebrity leaders, presidents, congressmen, all of these people that we feel that are leaders of men. But what we found out is when we try to go and, and do the same exact thing as these people, we somehow have to go to school now, we have to get degrees, we have to know people, we have to save money, we have to invest. When it seemed like some of these people, they just was born and then you know they talked to this person and then they got it. But it really was just in their design. Each and every person has a specific design a specific route, a specific message or an expression that you came here to express. So the human design isn't a religion, it's a map. And this map leads you to yourself. And the self is the higher self that Michelle has been alluding to, has, as Mark has, has been talking about, that energetic self, that, that that powerful part of ourself that we can wholly trust beyond all shadows of any doubts. That's the part of us that know us, that's here with us, that's looking out of these sockets. So we each and every one of us, we have this within us and this higher self that's within us is responsible for driving the vehicle. So with the human design, you learn about the Trinity. It's a trinity of energy, meaning there's a passenger, which is your personality, which is whatever your first and last name is. You have the, the, the vehicle that the passenger is in, which is the body makeup. And then you have the driver of that vehicle. So with the human design, it puts the passenger back in the passenger seat and allows the driver to actually drive you to 
the summit, to the goal, to whatever it is that you're trying to reach. But for the most part, because we haven't been taught that it's okay to be divinely individual, we say, okay, my dad did this, my mom did this, so this is probably what I should do. Maybe I should keep that line going and keep the family thing going. So we just fall in the line. We fall into a, we just fall in line and then we create toxicity. So we overeat, we undereat. We, we overexpress, we underexpress. Simply because we're lost. Before I got into the human design, I was staying in the projects, sleeping on my mom's couch, 30 something years old, vegan, single, everything. And I was. Uh, and that was about four years until I was celibate for about four and a half years. I was a vegan all of that time at my mom's house, just like lost, just not understanding anything about anything until the human design popped up and it, it told me one specific thing. It said that I was a projector. And this projector has a specific strategy and an inner authority. And I was like, strategy and inner authority. So with the human design, each and every person has a strategy, meaning the strategy that you would use to get to the goal. All my life, they told me that I was a black man and I was athletic. I should go play a sport or I should go work hard or just go out there and do something. And it's like, well, when I go out, and I did it. I worked 35 different jobs. And none of it worked. I hated every single job that I ever did. I never liked anything. And it was simply because as a projector, my strategy in life was simply to wait to be invited. So the whole time, I was literally going against the flow of who I was. And I was trying to be like every other big man on campus, and I was trying to go get it. But every time I would do it, I would crash and burn. So I said, bump that. I'm finna just follow this little thing, this experiment, and I sat still. And I said, I'm just gonna wait to be invited. And then I met Michelle. And she invited me to Chicago. Left the couch, went to the condo. <laughs> <laughs> and we started our business immediately because she told me about the IFS and when I, she asked me three questions, I was already seven years old, back at my grandma's house, and I was like, what is this? Like, yes, I need to clear all of this up before I move forward. So I realized that together, it was a dynamic duo, and that together was how we were going to actually flow forward, because together we represent the divine masculine and feminine, which... I had to learn on my own while being celibate. I had to find my feminine inside, and when I did, she showed up. So, and we've been together for nine years, and still going strong, and it's been such an amazing journey, enlightening people and ourselves at the same time. So, the reason why I wanted her to be up here was just, one, to show the living proof of how when you step into alignment with who you are, your divinity shows up. And it will show up in ways where you may not even know because I'd never dated a white woman before. This was a shock. <laughs> so, but this woman here is my complete other half. So, it's wild how far off track I was because in the South, it was like, oh, you know, you don't be ringing no white girl to the house. Oh, boy, you were, we was down. We were still on the old school, right, you know? So, but that wasn't ever me. You know, I'm just supposed to wait to be invited. It don't matter if you white, blue, orange. So by me waiting to be invited, by me stepping into alignment with my actual path, it allowed for that golden light to appear and for me to walk it. 
And it's been an amazing, amazing journey ever since. And it's still to this day, even now. So a lot of the times when I talk about the human design, I don't, I, I don't really get too heady with it because it was so personal for me. It, it, was such, it was such a gift because I was crying and I was praying for something that I could deliver to the people that will be real, but also transformative and something that will bring us to our actual ascension. So the human design is a fifth dimensional teaching. The human design is the baseline for what we need in order for us to know who we are on the next level. Because when you move into this fifth dimension and beyond, you're tapping into instantaneous manifestation. And if you are confused, you're going to instantaneously manifest confusion. So we have to know ourselves even down to these, these black and white levels. Oh, I'm a projector. I'm a manifester. I'm a generator. So within the human design, there are five types of beings on the planet. Each and every one of us here, we represent one of these types. And we all have a specific blueprint. I like to call it the Akashic Records for this lifetime because that's what it is. And it's a divine dispensation. Some people may not know what that means, but every now and again within the history of creation, we get divine dispensations. One divine dispensation that we got was named Jesus or Yeshua. He was a gift to the game. The human design is a gift. We wasn't going to really get this because it's kind of cheating. You're supposed to figure this out through living that, okay, yeah, let me slow down before I make a decision. Oh, let me trust my gut because every time I don't listen to the gut, it's something crazy. Or every time I listen to the gut, it's something wrong because you may be emotional and you may be on a wave and not some instantaneous gut response. But the knowledge out here is to follow your gut. That's not for everyone. So the human design brings us into our, like I say, our individualism, and it allows for us to respect each other for who we are. We have helped relationships come together. We have helped babies come into this reality from people who say they couldn't get pregnant by simply stepping into alignment because if you are a powerful being and you're walking down the wrong path and then you're trying to conceive, all you're going to do is just damage the reality. So a lot of us, a lot of our goals, a lot of our, our plans and a lot of that stuff can be halted simply because we're just on the wrong path. We ate the right foods. We love the right people. But somehow my life ain't working how it's supposed to work. So... I feel like, especially for all of these powerful healers in here, it's like for us, it's so important for us to know these things to the detail. Like, okay, I'm this, I'm that. This is the black and white of who I am because this is flesh. Flesh is in the black and white. We're in the light and we're in the contrast. In order for us to show up here, we have to be in contrast. If we were totally in the light, we won't have no bodies to see. So... We can honor these systems and, and, and these maps, you know, as long as it's true to who we are. So the human design is a synthesis of the I Ching, the Kabbalah, the chakra system, astrology, and numerology. And astrophysics. And astrophysics. So it's a synthesis of all of these. So you can literally go to it. And when I say... Your astrology will line up 1,000%. Your numerology will line up 1,000%. So it doesn't even detract from any other systems. So this is how I knew that this was the truth. And also because of just the supreme transformation of what simply following my strategy and inner authority. So the human design teaches you that the authority isn't outside of you. It's inside. And each and every one of us have a specific way that we address this inner authority via the gut, via the spleen, or via the emotional solar plexus. 
the rare occasions we have the heart sent well the heart center people they have to speak their truth out loud and depending on how it sounds they can say yes or no to something so some people higher selves are so much on the surface that all that all they all that all that they would need to do is just speak it out loud but these same people will go to the ashrams and they'll do all of this stuff to go connect into the higher self when some people are walking around as the higher self and you simply say yeah do i really want this butter pecan ice cream with the with the rat poison droppings you said out loud real quick what the no i don't think i'm gonna do the rat poison today and and it's like and you can go with that and that is the authority that is the god that you pray to and and you know and if you don't want to believe that the, the other god that you pray to ain't gonna be mad at you and it's gonna just give you a bunch of gifts for doing it so what i learned was that it's a practice and the human design is a seven year pro it's a seven year process of releasing what no longer serves you and what got stuck in there as a child because from the ages from zero to seven years old, we were learning at 100 times the rate of an adult. And then it started going down from there, but those first seven years, if you were told that men do this and women do this, oh, law, oh, that's in there. That's in there. No matter how much clearing and cleansing you do, you have to acknowledge your truth first. So when you acknowledge your truth, then the false stuff starts showing up. You start getting real uncomfortable when the truth starts coming. So it's real good to get uncomfortable, especially Michelle doing her session and, and, you know, getting people uncomfortable to face these things because that's when the real starts showing up. The false start coming out. The false is uncomfortable. The real feels great. So the human design has, has been a monumental tool so far just for me and everyone that I've seen I met Cheryl through the human design. You know, our first session was pure magic. And, you know, and the things that come from just these, these sessions is this. This wasn't here before we did our session. After we got that session, Cheryl turned into a genie. Like, you turned into, what? <laughs> like, I've been trying to do this right look she don't, so, you see I'm the gatekeeper so I gotta watch everybody <laughs> so you gonna get the mansion huh alright so so you know but, but we need this right look I can't be the only one like we need everybody I need everybody and I don't mind because it feels so great it feels so good to just be in my element and to not be forced to be somebody who I wasn't and that's why I did 30 something jobs <laughs> because I was forced to be somebody I wasn't. And the human design just, it brought so much life into my life. It brought my purpose. So if you want to find out your purpose, if you want to find out why do I think like this, why am I attracted to chaos, why am I attracted to drama, why can't I get out of the shadow realms, why am I so introverted, right? It's so important for our minds to see this in black and white because we're living in black and white. We're living in the contrast, so we have to see it. And when you see that, oh my God, this is, I got an open mind. That's why, my, that's why I, can, I can understand all of this stuff. That's why I'm psychic. This is why I'm an empath. So it brings the truth of who you are right here, right now, and you get to play with it. You get to experiment with it to see if it really is the, the deal. And this is why I said it was one of the most monumental teachings because I learned astrology. I learned all of that stuff, but astrology never told me to go out there and do this. It never said, this is your strategy as a Taurus and a Capricorn and a Libra. It's, 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 it tells me the characteristics. Now I got the juice, but I didn't get the okay. I'm emotional. So when somebody come to me and I get excited, I'm not supposed to say yes. Like if I say, if you come to me with a, and you say, Kayvon, I got a million dollars for you right now. And if I get excited about that, 
and I say yes to that, oh, you got me. You could put anything in that contract. Because I'm going to believe, if I believe I'm supposed to follow my excitement, like follow your heart, follow your bliss, right? I'm following the, a million is the bliss. So I sign that paper, and next thing you know, the next day, well, you, you're going to get it, but not this lifetime, not this, not maybe the third lifetime. In this lifetime, you're going to be my slave and have to do all of this. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. But I, was, I followed the guru on YouTube that told me to follow my bliss. Oh, no, I'm emotional. I was supposed to wait out. I was supposed to, oh, I was supposed to get hyped up first. And then when that person leave, my emotional wave will naturally dip. And then I'll start feeling negative about it and real dowdy about it. But then five minutes later, it goes back up. Five minutes later, it goes back down. Five minutes later, it goes back up. And it may do this for a week before it settles. So we have certain things that we can do for people who are emotional and who have to make these type of decisions by simply asking or saying, let me get back to you. So I never knew I could say that to people. I thought that I was being rude when I do that. So all my life, I was forcing fast answers. I don't like to do anything fast. I like to take my crazy slow time to do stuff because that's my emotional process. That's my divine and unique individuality. And when I respected that, I started eating again. I was making, I, I couldn't afford it. I was on a $20 a week budget. When I started following this human design, I'm on an unlimited or whatever a week budget. Because whatever money I spend, it keep coming back. Now the universal laws are now in play. We shut off our schedule to not get clients and they've been signing up for sessions the whole time we've been. And I'm like, what the? Like it, once, and once you're in alignment, you can't, you can't get out of it almost. And that was the most beautiful thing to ever uncover. So the human design is something that I feel that we should explore and that it's something for you to really, to really, really tap into and understand who you are on that detail of a level. It is, it's just been so monumental. So I just have to say that. That's beautiful. And I think it's great to hear about your personal experience about it and how much it changed things for you individually. Um, because really that's the heart of what human design is, to recognize the differences. So I was feeling like maybe we could just explain a little bit technically what that's about so people can understand. So like when Kayvon says, I'm emotional, what does that mean? It means that his solar plexus is defined. His solar plexus is a motor that consistently operates in a certain way. This is the emotional center. And it's a motor and it goes just like emotions do. It goes up, down, sideways. And at the up level, when you're really hyped up, everything can seem like a yes. But then, you know, later that day, as you said, when you think about it, you're like, wait, look at this small print here. I don't know if this is a good contract. And you go back and forth until you get to like a very dry place that's very still. There's no nervousness and you get a clear answer. And that's 50% of people. Mm -hmm. But the other 50% of us are not emotionally defined. Our solar plexus is not consistent. It's empathic. So that means that we take in the emotions of others and double them. Yes. So we really have no business making emotional decisions because ours is going to be extra distorted. But I feel like the gut is that I usually use that as an example because it's so easy. Mm -hmm. So as you alluded to, you know, people say, oh, trust your gut, trust your gut, trust your gut. Well, for 30% of us, 30% of people have an undefined sacral. That means it's not consistent energy, but rather they're empaths in the sacral. So they're taking in other people's gut energy and amplifying it. So if Kayvon is sitting around me and listens to his gut, what he's actually getting is my defined gut radiating out. So I'm like the radio station, he's like the radio receiver. So he's actually getting the message that's for me to follow. Yes. So a lot of well-intentioned people who maybe are like me, they have a defined gut. They're telling everybody, trust your gut, it works all the time. Well, if you're a generator like me with the undefined solar plexus, that's true. But if you're a projector like Kayvon with the undefined gut, it's not the case. So human design takes this to 
the most fine hair splitting levels. How you eat, what type of environment your body wants to be in, what type of people you're compatible with, the mechanics of your aura. And yes. I feel like maybe that's yes. what we should speak about next because we, yes. we only have about 10 minutes left. Okay. So unlike traditional astrology, human design actually talks about aura mechanics. Yes. So probably everybody in here knows about auras, their different colors and that sort of thing. But in human design, we recognize that auras are mechanically different, as different as a sailboat is from a jet plane or a race car is from an 18-wheeler truck. So what we have going on is you'll say your dad was a jet plane and you're a sailboat. He's shaming you for not flying and for just going with the flow. Or maybe your dad's a sailboat and you're a jet plane and he's shaming you for not calming down and for always wanting to take off. So we do this homogenization where we're trying to make everybody fit the same and we're so uniquely different that we just really can't do that. Yes. So human design is really about validating what is correct for you versus the next person. Yes. So thank you for explaining that. Mm -hmm. So the different aura types. So like she say, we know that we, ha we all have an aura. But what we didn't know was that our aura is literally doing something specific. So, for example, there's five types of people. So you have manifestors, which represent about 8% of the population. You have generators, regular normal generators, rep, rep, 30, about 30, 30, 30 35. 35%. Manifesting generators, about 30, 35%. You have projectors, which represent 19%, and reflectors, which represent only 1%. Projectors and reflectors are what we call non-energy types. So you have manifestors, generators, and manifesting generators representing the energy world. The world of energy is everything around us. All is, everything is energy, right? We, we got that foundation earlier today, right? So everything is energy. The world literally caters to energy. So the two outside types are the projectors and the reflectors. They are the mental types. I'm a mental type living in an energetic world. So that was the confusion for me was that I thought that I was energetic like everybody else because I got two arms and two legs. So I went out there trying to be extra energetic and I was extra off the chain, but I totally, but my shelf life was this long. So energy beings have the longevity. They have the access to the energy world, right? Um, the world is catered to energy. So when you understand you're an energy being, the first thing you understand is that the world is catered to you. Most of the slaves in this planet, on this planet, are generators, energy beings, who don't even know that the world is catering to their every emotion. So... The auras, each type has a specific aura. The manifester has what we call a repelling aura. They have the ability to literally repel obstacles out of their way so that they can reach their goals. So multi-level marketing programs, manifestors, they always, always make it to the top of them things. Like they will say, look, all you gotta do is do this. Just go do it. I don't understand why you won't just go do it, right? their aura is constantly moving the stuff that will get in their way out of their way. So they're designed to go get it. They're designed to trailblaze. So manifestors are trailblazers. They open up a path where there was none. You're not supposed to latch on to them. You're not supposed to latch, you're not supposed to latch on to the manifestor. You're supposed to allow them to blaze the path open because they're never gonna stop. They're gonna continuously do things. Their aura is like, what can I do next? What can I do next? What can I get out of the way so that I can make it to this goal? And also, if they don't do, if they don't take action, they are not magnetic. So <laughs> literally, if they don't get off their butt, law of attraction won't work for them. It will not. It will. It will. It will, <laughs> it will work. It, the you law know, of like, attraction will work in the way that it'll work for the way of the manifester. It won't work in the way of the generator. So... The next aura is the generator. 
the generator aura type is what we call um, it's enveloping, but it does this. It flows out and then it flows back in, it flows out and it flows back in. So so what this in what this does. Hold on, excuse me. So what this does is it allows for the magnetism process to activate. So generators who represent about 65% of the population, by the way, they are the majority of the population. They, their aura operates on magnetism. And this is the pure generator. So the pure generator, you don't really have to go out there to do things. All you have to do is literally wait, allow the energy to come to you. This is why I put allowing in my prayer. You allow the energy to come to you and then you respond. So generators are supposed to remain still and then wait for life to come to them and then respond. Manifestors, they remain still, wait for the divine inspiration, and then they go. They go get it. Something in them says, I need to go get it. So they go get it, but they have to wait for that. The projectors... Projectors, we have, I mean, the manifesting generators, they have a uniquely magnetic aura in the fact that it has both the quality of repelling like a manifester, but also magnetism like a generator. So that aura actually filters. So manifesting generators have what we call a filtering aura. They will only bring to them what's in total alignment. So it'll filter things out before it even arrives, which will sometimes make a manifesting generator feel as if life isn't coming to them or their thing is taking forever to come. So the manifesting generator wants to be super, is trying to cut, core, cut corners here, cut corners there to try to hurry up and get to it. So, but they have to understand that they're magnetic as well. It's just that they have to go through a filtering process. So I like to tell people that once you understand your aura, it's doing so much of the work for you. It's doing like 80% of the work. It's just we're, we're getting in our way. Manifestors, instead of, going, instead of getting up and going to go get it, they sit still, become lazy, and try to wait for stuff to come. My son is manifesting. All day long, this dude is sitting here trying to wait for the goods. I'm like, no, man. Um, you know, the generators, they, instead of, instead of um, you know, just waiting to respond, the generators now turn into manifestors, and they're like, I got all of this energy, so I want to go do something with it. So the generator is like, okay, I'm finna, let's go do this, let's go do that, and then it's just hiccups and flat tires and all type of stuff the whole way. Because the generator is supposed to wait. So the projector, the non-energy types, the aura for the projector is what we call focusing and absorbing or penetrating and absorbing. So with projectors, what we do is we plug into the heart space of people and then we plug in and then we start pulling energy, information about the person entire system. And then from there, we can guide you. So projectors, we're actually the guides of the reality because we're on the sidelines. We're the mental people. So we're kind of watching the game. We're watching. So in a football game, the coach, there you go, the coach will be the projectors and the players on the field will be the manifestors, generators, manifesting generators. So as a projector, my, like I said, I was, I was all over. I thought I was a manifester and a generator. I was doing things, and then I would just respond to stuff. So with me, I grew up in a house full of generators. So if you see somebody on the street crying, you go respond. I go see somebody on the street. they like, get away from me. I'm, I'm doing something. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm in my zone right now. Like, leave me alone. I'm like, what? So I can't respond to things like a normal generator would. So if, if we were walking down the street, you may think I was cold hearted. But every time I respond, it's like the wrong response every single time, because as a projector, I have a penetrating and focusing. So I'm a surgeon. 
When I respond to something, I'm trying to fix it and clear it out and whatever. And somebody may be going through something. They may be going through a spiritual trip and they need to just go through the pain. I'm over here trying to soothe and cut the pain. Now, pain is what they've been running from their whole life. So as a projector, I thought I was doing the right thing by responding to the hurt and the pain. But no, I was getting on people's nerves. <laughs> and, and then, you know, eventually I stopped getting invited. And, you know, and it's like, why? So projectors, we are very knowledgeable about everybody's bodies and what's going on with their life and stuff like that. But when it comes to us and, and us being penetrated, and I, it's like we won't go there. It's hard for us to go there. And we need to go there first so that we can let the bitterness go because the rest of the world is energy. So projectors suffer from bitterness because we can't really get involved like everybody else and we have amazing ideas and all type of stuff. So we can be involved as projectors, it's just we're guides. We guide other people. And when I figured that out, the truth came out because I always was happier for people. I love when people get good grades in school. I love when people don't get in trouble by their parents. I love when people take my advice and then something good happens. I always love that more than my accomplishments, more than winning a track meet, more than winning a basketball game. It was helping somebody else win. That was my high. As a projector, that's our natural high. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to get high off of helping others. And in turn, we get the energy back in an even exchange of energy. So because the projector aura is a penetrating and absorbing aura, we're one-on-one -on -one people. Our job is literally one-on-one, on-one, on-one. We're not really group-oriented people. So, um, you know, for projectors to know that is huge because all my life, I was trying to be in a group. I was trying to be included. You know, I didn't understand my worth of being the coach. So moving to the last type, which is the reflector. The reflector, they represent about 1% of the population, but they would represent the cheerleaders on the football field. Meaning when you meet a reflector, because they're a reflector, they're literally reflecting you. There, if you were to see their human design chart, it will be completely white. So they have what we call a Teflon aura. And just, just so people know, completely white means every single one of their centers is open, open. and empathic. Yes, open and empathic. So they don't have empathic. consistent energy. They're just sampling okay. everybody they get around. They're having a totally different experience of the energy in the field based on who they're around. Yes. Whereas the rest of us have at least two centers, if not more colored in. And whatever you have colored in on your chart is consistent. It's what makes you you no matter what day it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the reflectors, they reflect. But because they reflect, their aura actually is Teflon it can't really be penetrated. Most people don't know what's on the other side of the mirror because every time you step into the mirror, you just see yourself. So the reflectors, they can get lost in other people's identities because they don't understand that what they're reflecting is never them at all. It's never really them. They're what's behind the mirror that nobody really can see. So with the reflectors, they are the wisdom keepers. These are the people, this is why we call them the cheerleaders because they, they will go from religion to religion. You'll know reflectors because they'll be a Christian, seriously. And then they'll be a Muslim, seriously. And then they'll be a Hebrew Israelite, seriously. It's always the Hebrew Israelite. It's always, <laughs> it's always the Hebrew Israelite, <laughs> always. Those are reflector kings. Mm -hmm. So, but they always do it for a certain amount of time, and then you they fade off. You don't hear from them. Now they're doing something else. Now it's, a, it's what, whatever the next. So they reflect and they sample the different religions and different practices, different ways of being. And if the reflector don't know that, they can just become lost in all of that, and they can think that they're living a life that's unstable. You know. So when you're so empathic and when you're so open, you know, you can feel vulnerable, you know, 
just vulnerable within, the, within this chaotic reality, and then you try to become something. And what I love about the human design is that we don't have to try to become anything anymore. From birth, I found out that I was, I'm a three five projector. The three is expression, the five is the messenger. So you think I had to go, I didn't go to school to learn how to talk to people, right? Like, no, I've always been like this. I've always been ready to talk to people and ready to give the juice and ready to give the message. It's just, I didn't know that. So I had a false nervousness. It was a false nervousness. It was like, it's like, how are you gonna be nervous to be who you are? But nobody ever told me that it was okay for me to drop these messages. But I also never waited to be invited. <laughs> so I was stepping on everybody's toes. Kanye West is a projector. Kanye West is a projector. Who never waits to be invited. <laughs> he don't never wait to be invited. Mm. Just come out. Just They say, look, man, we finna talk about some chicken today. And he finna come give you the juice about whatever is on his mind. Mm. And it's like, nah, man, you got to be invited to talk about that first. So, you know, it's, it's, it's wild. So when, when you understand who you are, it's like, I like to, you know, look at society as a mosaic, as a, pitch, as a picture, right? There's never one color in a painting. It takes multiple colors to make up a painting, right? So that's the multi-dimensional nature of the one, of the oneness, of the all that there is. And this is just one layer, right? The human design is one layer. We also have a dream body. So when you tap into this human design, this is why I say this is the gateway to the next level because there's another body you tap into when you go to sleep. That's different than this body that we're in right now and it has certain programs that when you wake up, you try to fulfill them. And it creates what we call the not self. So we have to learn about these 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 multi-dimensional layers of ourselves and understand what that actually means. And multi-dimensionality in a very simple way is multitasking. Spiritual multitasking. You have a body on this level, you have a body on the astral level, you got a body on the, the mental, the body on the causal, you have a body in all of these different levels and that's the multi-dimensional nature of who we are but also, at the same time, these bodies that we're in, they're equipped, once you get them into alignment, for us to travel through the multi-dimensions. So, not only does this you know, teaching wake us up for this reality, for the waking life reality, it also prepares us for the next level, which is something that I personally teach myself. I've been having out-of-body experiences since I was seven years old. And I went in professionally back in 2008, just I went in like consciously went in and I perfected the process. So now I teach it and I've been on it for real since then. And before I can go through a certain gate on the next level, I had to learn my human design. And I couldn't believe it because I thought I was rising above earthly things and all of this stuff. When you go to the next levels, it's embodiment. There's no level of living that's not embodiment. Each body you go through has a design, has a purpose, has a already, like we are so organized within our spirit that it's wild, it's wild that like the, how organized our spirit is. So we have so many layers, so many things and uncovering these foundational things about ourself is the path. We're on the golden brick path is what I call it, you know, the golden brick path, not the yellow brick path, the golden brick path, that's what we're on. And each step, each modality, whether it's Reiki, IFS, um, uh, uh, quantum healing, you know, hypnosis, and Akashic record readings, all of this stuff, right? These are all levels, tarot readings, all of these things, these are all golden paths, golden bricks, golden steps on our way to our divine individuality. And in order to exist in the fifth dimension and beyond, you must be responsible for your individual. You have to understand your power. We're all becoming sons. One day we all will become a sun or a moon, depending on what level we at. But one day 
we will become that son, and the son ain't up there holding hands with nobody. <laughs> the son is out there in individuality and loving it. No dark spots. Just shining and bringing life, but it's seemingly up there by itself. Why are you so happy? Right? <laughs> What's going on? And the son is on his path. It knows. It knows that it has a purpose, and the human design gives us our purpose, each and every person. I don't care if you're autistic. I don't care if you can't walk or see. You have a design. You have a specific purpose. You have a unique expression that you came here to express. So I just want to thank you all for the expression. Yes. Any questions, though, just in case, before we leave? Because I think that's time, right? Okay. okay, so um, there's a website. Um, it's not our website. I wish it was our website, but it's a website called jovianarchive.com. Or you can go to humandesignamerica.com. Mm -hmm. I like their charts. Mm -hmm. Yep. Easy to see. And you can just type in your birthday, and they'll give you a free chart. So from there, you get the free chart. You can kind of get a glimpse at how it looks. But it, it looks like... It can look like foreign, like another language. So, so having it translated is the most important part. But what I love about translating it is that once you get it translated for you during a session, you know it, you learn it. You know? Now, you may not know it immediately, but you get it, you have it, it's, it's in your system. So you can sign up for sessions on our website at um, www.activationcoaching.com. Www um, that's where you go at to get the session, but you can get the free chart from the jovianarchive.com or humandesignamerica.com. And uh, you, you'll need your birth location and time as well as the birth date. So. Mm -hmm. in, okay. Okay, okay, so, so informing is your strategy. So informing is what you're supposed to do before you do anything. So if you get up and go to the bathroom, you're supposed to say, hey, I'm about to get up and go to the bathroom. Hey, y'all, I'm about to get up and go get something to eat. Hey, y'all, I'm about to go to the room and go to sleep. Because the manifester, you guys have impact. And if, so if the room was purple, before you got here, and you was in your heart space, so you representing green. When you walk into the purple room, immediately green starts appearing in the room, and then eventually the room becomes green. That's the manifesto. The manifesto will take over the entire room with their aura and will change the environment to a green environment. And when you get up and leave from that, you leave a, it, it'll jar people. It'll, It'll, it's like we wasn't prepared to go from green to whatever the color is after you leave, so we just need a little bit of warning, right? So you have to inform us because you impact, the, you impact everybody. Also, if you don't inform, meaning if you don't give enough information, then you won't get your support that you need either. You'll get a lot more no's than you get yeses simply because you're not giving enough information. You're not informing enough. So when I start talking to my manifestors about informing, oh, they, they blow up. They blow up because you got a part of you that don't like that. It can do it. It, will, it has no problem informing. But another, but you do have a part of you that's a nonverbal communicator that don't really want to inform. So that's the you got a little duality in there. You know. Yeah, the challenge with the manifestor. Your aura, because it knocks down obstacles, on a pure energetic level, your aura does not experience no. So, so your aura is constantly going like this. So basically, you're the one who's like knocking down the doors for everybody. 
So all you got to do is be like, hey, y'all, I'm about to knock down the doors. If you want to come in, I'm about to knock down the doors. Anybody, anybody, then you go knock down the doors. So the informing, it's not about asking permission. It's like giving people a heads up. These doors are about to be knocked down. You can come or go, but I'm knocking down the doors. Yeah. So then people who are in alignment can follow behind and be like, yeah, I want to be on your squad. And people who are like, I don't want to go in there. They can go somewhere else. So you don't have the tension and chaos that would happen if you didn't give them a heads up. And I know you have experienced (laughs) that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get so many no's, man, if you don't if you don't follow that strategy, man. That strategy is so important. But for you, you have to get no's because it'll be unfair. <laughs> it'll be unfair if, you did, if people didn't say no to you. If you had a yes every time you go out, that'll be too, like, it'll be too much manifest. You'll get overwhelmed. So it forces you to get in alignment with what's actually right for you, like, for real. It's just you, have a, you may have more of a trial and error process than most. And I teach a lot of the manifestors to not get discouraged by the word no. The word no means nothing. It's 360 degrees in a circle. So you have 360 options. Every, every, everything you do. Everything. And it's like the, that saying, rejection is God's protection. Because if the people are saying no to you, they're not, you're not for each other, and that's okay. And that's one of the beautiful things about human design and the era we're in right now because ascension is this hot topic, right? Unity consciousness coming together. Unity consciousness on this plane, it doesn't mean we all get along. doesn't mean we're all friends. It doesn't mean we all like each other. Some people are incompatible, and we're incompatible for a reason. You know, like my lung cells need to be here. My stomach cells need to be here. And that's okay. So I see this kind of new age idea that like everyone should be friends and everyone should get along. But you look at human design charts, there are some people that electromagnetically, you were talking about electromagnetics, are going to clash. It doesn't matter how enlightened you are, your energy clashes. It's like chalk and cheese, oil and water. It doesn't, then there's other people you get around and because of the way the two of your designs come together, it flows, it's easy, it's effortless. And that's the yes that we're looking for. And the people that don't fit with you, it's okay, better to find that out right away so they can go find the people they do fit with. And it's, there's no bad feelings. Boom. you go there you go there you go because I absorb <laughs> yes man I knew you was a projector I knew you was a projector man I knew it the way just what you were saying you was, you know too much about the internals we're, we're internal we're doctors so we're the projectors are the spiritual doctors naturally from birth and we're, so, we were, we're supposed to cultivate that, but we, get, we go out here and get jobs <laughs> in sports. You know, I'm going straight to the gym, <sighs> straight to the gym. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, They're those God's my, chosen those, people. Those God, God, God's chosen people. They really are, my though. People. The because meat and it's, potatoes. It's such a, it's a very straightforward thing. The whole, like the generalized teaching of law of attraction works for you. If you're vibing high and you have a really good vibration, it's very attractive. It's very magnetic. Things that match you are going to automatically come to you. Just flow. Flow. So your life isn't based on what you know. It's based on how you feel. That's it. And the, the, the better you feel, the more abundance, the more love, the more understanding. Like, it's just everything in your life, it, it becomes on that level. And so the generator is the people who say, get on my level, right? That's the enlightenment of the generator is get on my level because you won't accept anything below it. You may accept something above it, but you won't go below it. And, and with generators, a lot of generators get tricked into contracts because generators are locked in. Yeah, you, generators, 
Yeah, generators are contractual beings. So, so whoever knows, somebody knew this, and they just decided to hire a bunch of generators to do all of the slave type work. So they'll give you a contract and say, yeah, you can work for my company, and then in 25 and 30, 30 years, you're gonna retire with a certain amount. Right, but within that 25 and 30 years, they would have made probably millions of dollars off of your energy alone. When you wouldn't have, it, when if, if you would have known that you were a generator before and that you're the contractual person, meaning you don't accept contracts unless it's like a million dollars or better, like your contracts have to be so sweet for you to say yes to. But they'll trick us into believing that, oh, because you need money and you. But, you, you know, we don't know our magic. We don't know how to place orders with the universe. So we don't know how to use the magic. So we go out here and think we gotta work for the magic or work for the energy. When you're a generator, you came with the energy. That's like why Hollywood felt action is still. Yes, yes. Boom, being still and this stuff still flowing, it's still moving, that was boom. Yes. And the manager was like, okay, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the generator is still responding to life. You're not really, not really doing that. Well, yeah, we you're are just involved. Responding. Yeah, you're involved in action. It's just the ordering of things. Yes. So every generator, whether it's pure generator, manifesting generator, by definition, we're the ones with the defined sacral. That means consistent access to life force energy. So we have the energy to build things. Yes. Manifestors, you have a quick burst. It's a burst of energy, knock down the door, then you rest. Yeah. Once you knock down the door, us generators are going to come in and start putting the bricks up. And generators made this all this happen, right? Yeah, a totally. manifester had an idea of this house. A projector did the blueprint. The generator built the house. And then the reflector walked in and said, it feels good in here. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. And that's the game. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Look, I feel that. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. And yeah, with the generator, you know, you're you're the prana. Like you can absorb it. I mean, it's that's what it does. Your prana is f constantly flowing in and out. And if you tap onto that. Oh, you can ink, you can grip onto it. You can grip it, and that that's lunch, dinner, lunch and dinner, right? So, you know, you can do so much with this with that energy, not doing the opposite of it, right? Like honoring your response as a generator, waiting to respond to things, as a projector, waiting to for the invitation. We can't make a move unless we are invited, you know. Um, manifestors waiting for that inspiration to come in for you to say you know what yeah i'm gonna go do this and i'll let everybody know i'm going to workshop this weekend or i'm doing this we're gonna have this going and you just keep going and then with manifestors the more you do that the more they just get in line and you start and you start realizing your support is crazy you know because manifestors you guys literally the world shape shifts as you move you guys work with the law of action, the universal law of action. That's the manifestor's universal tool. And the law of action literally is whatever you are imagining and feeling, 
when you place an action after that, the universe takes that and starts putting the wheels in the motion for it to be manifested. With manifestors, you do that as you walk out and about, you thinking about pizza, all of a sudden, somebody call you up and say, hey, you wanna go get some pizza or pizza billboard pop up or it just, the reality literally shape shifts. Like the story with Junior, you remember? Uh, yeah, I was, I was taking, Junior was in the car with me. I had to drop off some stuff at Goodwill and he's like, I wanna go to Five Guys, I wanna go to Five Guys. So I was like, okay, let me drop this off and then we can go to Five Guys. As I turn into the parking lot where the Goodwill is, there's a Five Guys next door. <laughs> and, he w and this is the what? challenge in raising manifestors is that your parents can't stop that. You so we tell say. him no GMO candy, no, and he will go to this the dude. park and manifest a birthday party with GMO right candy there. so he can get his Jolly Ranchers because supposedly the organic ones don't taste good. I think they taste good. And I mean, he do it all the time. Like, I done told him a million times you can't eat a certain candy. Go outside, you I see him stop. eating some candy. Don't like, materialize what? it. What did you, where did you get it? Yeah. And manifestors, man, like, it's magic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now nah, it's gonna be normal now. <laughs> you you don't. Yeah, you don't walk through the portal. The Manifestors. Portal is <laughs> yeah. I I feel like I wish that he had used the term initiators, because everyone's manifesting stuff all the time. But you're really the initiators. Initiator. Yes, that's better. Yes. So. Thank you. But it can be lonely. It can be a lonely role. Whereas generators, we tend to be in groups. We work in groups. I mean, if you're gonna build a house, you build it with a group of people, right? The architect can you know, draw the plans by himself. The manifester can go and search the sites and purchase the sites on his own, but you need a group of generators to build. So generators, we're really, really in that kind of human experience of the energy and the building and creating in this realm. And the important thing about our role is that we get, we are in control of the portal of what gets built or not. So if you don't want McDonald's in your community, the generators have to say, nope, we're not building that. We're waiting and until, what was built. it, Allen Iverson? Um, the, no, Ray Allen. Ray Allen? Yeah, yeah, Ray Allen did a, um, mm -hmm. he has this, organic fa fast food place in Miami. But hold on now, because I know we got a oh, time. Yeah. We're all over yeah. time. But I got to tell y'all this because it's the magic of, I feel, the manifesting generator. And projectors, manifesting generators, projectors together is crazy. So we were driving in a car and um, Michelle has a very sensitive diet. So within a human design, I can look at your chart and literally determine what your diet is supposed to be for your body. So we found out her diet, and she's supposed to be all organic, very simple foods. And we notice how when we go out, when we travel, it's barely, it's like hard to find organic stuff if you're not in certain big cities or something. So I was, we was pretty much just daydreaming, you know what I mean? Like we was just dreaming, the law of action, right? We were in our imagination, and I was talking about having a fast food organic restaurant I said we need a fast food organic restaurant and we were speaking I was I was trying to speak it out into the reality so I knew what I was doing and we were talking about it and what like a week later I hear on Facebook that Miami Heat player Ray Allen just opened up the first fast food organic restaurant in Miami my hometown I'm in Colorado my hometown is Miami, and I'm talking about it, and it opens up in Miami. We go to it, so of course I'm going to have to go to it. Yeah. The symbol of it is a rooster. I'm a Chinese rooster. I'm the rooster in the Chinese calendar. That's, that was, I was, that's me, that's it. So, of course, when I went in there, all of the food, great. <laughs> totally in alignment. <laughs> Best it's restaurant. Really <laughs> so it bougie really and clean. Good. I love it. You know, and it just blew my mind how this law of action work. And, you know, and I'm just, 
the, I'm telling with the manifesting generator, right? Not the full manifest. The manifesting generator, that's net. We get buildings created. <laughs> I was like, whoa, okay, this is real. This is real. I'm adding this to the storyline because, uh, you know, and the only thing you guys have to do is just do it. That's it. Just do it. Just, you know, take that step forward. Learn yourself, right? Tap into it and just take that one little step and a whole entire new realm opens up. And it's just wild to live in a reality to where I'm not trying no more. Just not trying. Yes. Yes, being, and it's happening. Yeah, because when you really understand how you're designed, which your higher self chose this, you can respect that. And then what we do with our coaching is to help people get over the block. So there are a lot of manifestors who stop their manifesting, you know, and they try to act like generators and they pull it down and then things just go south for you. Then there's a lot of generators running around chasing stuff. And if I'm a magnet and everything I need comes to me, if I'm running around chasing, it's like I miss the boat. And the boat is sitting at my house waiting for me and I'm chasing jobs I don't even want because mom said I have to get a job. So the trick with generators is learning that patience and, and building up that faith. Yes. So, um, and we've seen a lot of those examples where we coach generators, stop chasing and just do what feels good. And then they see these miracles of things coming in alignment that feel good. Yes. Yes. So, and we do have an online school. Our next program is starting March 6th. <laughs> yes, and we do, it's about halfway full, so we have about six or seven more places. Our schools are very small, so everybody gets one on one attention, everybody's seen, heard, valued. Um, so, you can speak to us about that. Yeah, and we would love for you guys to, you know, whoever can join, to join because. The school is a school of alchemy. It's called the New Earth Self-Leadership Academy, and we follow the water path. The water path is the path of divinity from the top down, as opposed to the kundalini, which is pure fire, which burns you up from the inside, which is bottom up. So we, we bring the water into the system. Once the water flows down into the system, then the kundalini ignites naturally while the body is filled up with the divine fluid. That way you don't burn your organs. So you create the bliss energy. It happens, it, it starts to appear after you know a while of practicing this stuff. And if you're messing with us, you will get the jewels to know the exact practice. But you know, once again, thank you all. <laughs>